What's going on guys? Another video on throttle setup. Um, I guess the reason I wanted to show it was mostly to show the benefits of adding an extension to the little uh, throttle arm that they give you that comes off the you know the carb butterfly arm shaft. The bar the carb butterfly shaft, yeah. The arm that comes off of that shaft is always short. And um, there's some benefits to adding the extension to it, which is what I usually do, which is not hard. Um, I've done more of those just with a plastic servo arm um, that I drill two holes through bolt on to that short metal arm on there. And then, you know, um, bolt on the ball link to the end of that plastic extension you know it's just a uh, high-tech servos they come with a bunch of plastic servo arm spares kind of heavy duty and long um, and that's I've done that on many many planes and then occasionally I'll just weld an arm on um, but you know we already know that that'll get you more resolution um, which is gonna make your throttle much more smooth uh, so that's um, a great reason to do it and then I like using the spot-on uh, servo mount. Uh, some of these planes might just be Skywings. They come with a glue up, you know, la uh, lasered, lasered up, ready to glue uh, wooden mount, um, which works fine. You know, the it is kind of cheap wood and stuff. Um, you know, it's not it, it's it's fine, and you can make your own. I've done that plenty of times too, out of some wood. Those are bomb proof, but I like these spot on mounts uh just aluminum mount just throw it on there and servo bolts right on then yeah you got your best linear setup uh, that you can get i try to get those lined up also try to get them you know hopefully like this is ideal and usually it works out ideal one way or the other um where i'm lined up but you know i get to put two of those servo screws through the sides of the motor box you know that um that ply that has some thickness and meat to it um anyway that's a solid mount but all this stuff you know already, the thing about the extension is, you know, I'm always trying new things and I'm able to get like even 120, 120 on endpoints, a real good resolution with a short steel arm that comes on, you know, like the Walbro WB27 carbs uh, for the 170cc class. And even though it's a short pivot point, um, you know, if you go basically like half inch or five eighths, whatever the bottom hole is on these servo arms, it's not much bigger than half inch. You know, you can get the decent resolution and all that. And in this case, it's a little bit longer because they got this composite extension, but it's not as long as you'd like or as long as I do when I bolt on an extension. Um, but there's a little more distance there between the pivot point and the ball link. Um, than with like a Warbro WB27. So you can get the resolution. I didn't even have to go to the bottom hole on the servo arm um, to get 120, 120 endpoints here. But regardless, if you use the metal shorter one on the WB27 or you use this composite a little bit longer, maybe a quarter inch longer, maybe three sixteenths. Um, yeah, you can manage to get your resolution, but there's two things you won't get. One is I'm always concerned with how close the plastic ball link is to the mufflers, because mufflers are super hot, 450 degrees on average, and uh, you can melt that ball, so you're looking for some clearance there. And one of the side benefits of taking the time, which, like I said, I've got that down, it's pretty darn fast anymore, uh, to extend the arm. Um, is that it puts your ball link further down towards the motor, uh, like another half an inch, let's say, right here, and that gives you more clearance from the mufflers because the the mufflers are round, and um, so, you know, it hits the center part of the roundness now. I'm trying not to drop this radio. Let's see if I can grab a muffler. And then, you know, when you extend it, see, they're round, so you're hitting like where my thumb is, where the screw is on the shorter stock arm. 
But when you extend that arm down, you get here where you get all this extra clearance. So your ball is actually, plastic ball link, ball joint is actually much further away than the muffler, whereas it can be really close to it here with the short arm. So you get that advantage and then that even gets enhanced because like here, this is where the metal lines up and then they bolt it on this composite to the back and there's no room to squeeze a ball link in this side. Um, but when you make your own, you extend your own, you know, I take and put them on the, this side. So I'll put the plastic on this side, then I put the ball link on the inside. So, and then it's further down. So it's on the carb side, which is way cooler uh, in temperature. Um, and it's further down where it's further away from the muffler anyway. So it's like a double benefit. So, you know, it's funny cause you just do things through the years that you can see are working really well. So you just continue to do them. And then sometimes you'll try something else just, just for the curiosity and interest of doing it in a different way. And you can kind of see the benefits of why you've always done what you've done. And you know, there's a million ways to skin this cat. Um, I've seen, I've set these up a million ways and I've seen so many uh, varieties of ways at the field and a, a lot of them are, you know, uh, just fine. Um, they, I shouldn't say that totally because they usually nine times out of 10 have no resolution, but you know, overall the linkage is going to hold up, you know, um, but uh, having that extension on there, um, especially, you know, if you extend it on the outside away from the carb, and then put the ball link on the inside. Yeah, it gives you the resolution and it protects the ball link. Um, so that's just kind of a good benefit. And you know, the, here's the, the stock servo location. It's all set to go. And if you put an arm on, especially a longer arm, it'll line up good. Even a short arm, you if you put ball links, you know, and little pivot points, but you can, you get it as you put like a conical here to get it free on that angle, you're getting closer to the muffler, you know. But anyway, you can set all this stuff up. And it's fine. I've put plenty of servos in my day, you know, in this orientation. Um, and you could always move that over too, if you wanted to. Uh, so you could use a shorter servo arm and get better resolution there. Um, but having it flip 90, um, you know, gets you this more direct linear geometry. So, and you know, no um, chance of um, hitting the bottom of the motor box, which a lot of times when I set up this way, I've got to relieve a point on the motor box, get my Dremel out and relieve it because the uh, push rod is rubbing on it. So that takes care of that. Even when you extend this down really long, it's the push rod still doesn't hit the motor box in this orientation, you know, the servo 90 degrees like that. Um, so yeah, gone over this stuff a million times, but you know, never mentioned anything about how that works out, you know, if you put the extension on. Um, one of the things on the extensions I'll say is that, um, you know, it's hardened steel, the arm that comes out of the butterfly shaft. And if you take regular high speed bits, like DeWalt, Milwaukee, whatever from Home Depot, um, it's almost impossible. Like I could even call it impossible to drill it. But if you get yourself some real you know, even the cheapest ones you could find cobalt bits. You've got some cheap ones off Amazon and sometimes I even find a good brand that sells them. Um, it's so crazy. You know, they just go through absolutely like butter. You can even um, run them in relatively slow RPMs, like 500 RPMs or less. And, um, but they just, they just go through that hardened steel like it was nothing. Like it was just like a piece of balsa. So that really makes that a, a quick, easy thing versus fighting it. And of course, if you weld it, you don't have to deal with any of that. But to weld it, you gotta pull out the shaft because you don't wanna get any heat on anything. So any of the plastic parts. So then, you know, there can be some challenges sometimes with doing that. Oh, sometimes it slides in and slides right back and bolts right together. But it's a little bit more work. Um, but you don't have to do any of that to bolt on a plastic servo arm. And yeah, kind of key to that is that um, cobalt bit. And then it, there's another thing. Yeah, see these little <laughs> little dinky dink things, little uh, little tidbits of information. But um, I've been wanting to say this. I want to see um, 
you'll get these carbs sometimes. What? The DLEs. They, uh, and then some of the... Some of the DAs send the carb out with it. I don't know. I don't think I've ever seen on GP. But in that arm that's generally on the uh, servo, or the, uh, sorry, the um, throttle, the carb, the carb arm that comes out, the one I told you that's hard to steal, you got to drill, you know, it usually has a big five millimeter hole at the bottom, which you can actually get a short five millimeter bolt and put it through to bolt everything together, but that's, it's really not a good way to do it. Um, I mean, I can make it work a bit. Um, and you can use conicals to spread that out um, to where you can use a small bolt. You can use a 440 bolt or even smaller, three millimeter, 440, even smaller if, you, if, you, if the, the right size conical. But um, there's a sleeve. You guys may have seen it in your travels through the years. It's like a brass sleeve. Um which actually has like hex, you know, hex um, sides on it, you know, to get it, to get like a thin crescent wrench on, um, with I think three millimeter hole through the center tapped um, that you'll get on that carb arm um, occasionally on a carb, and I think I've got it from DA, maybe from DLE. So I've been trying to. I, Think about sourcing those, and then if you you know had a pile of those, twenty or fifty or something of those on the wall of your garage, then um, you know every time you did one of these and you wanted to throw an extension, you just throw. Even if you don't want to throw an extension, actually, um, because I use conicals when I don't put an extension, and that um, you know centers up a smaller bolt in that big five millimeter hole. Um, and makes it solid because uh, of the taper. But those insert sleeves with the, you know, hex head, whatever you want to call it. It's not a hex head, but it's just, you know, a bolted side. What would you call that? Um, you know, wrenchable. It's got, it's, it's got like, you know, a bolt end. I guess it's sort of a bolt end. And then a sleeve that goes through, and then the center is tapped. So it's a, it's a, it's an adapter. Okay, let's just call it that. You know, so it's a brass adapter that goes from five millimeter to, to you know, our three millimeter bolts. Um, if you had a pile of those, even if you use the stock setup without extending, it's going to be easier. And if you extend it, it's going to be easier too, because um, you don't have to try to fill that five millimeter hole up or find yourself a real short five millimeter bolt um, with nut, which takes up some bulk you know and adds adds some momentum weight you know to the arm it's probably fine yeah I've done that but I guess I don't recommend it so anyway I'm gonna look into that if I find it I'll post it but probably we should all have a bag of those five millimeter to three millimeter adapters you know and then that way yeah regardless if you're gonna use stock and go short arm no extension um, you're going to have an easier time of it. And if you're going to use a longer arm, if you're going to add to the arm, it's going to make that easier too. So that's kind of it, right? I spent some time ironing these things down on the new plane. I don't know if I mentioned that last night, but yeah, this plane's like only got a couple of flights on it, but it's got like nine years of wrinkles. Well, it had, had to take my big commercial heat gun of that thing I just had to be careful but I applied a you know good amount of heat to shrink all those um, wrinkles out and then I went over it with the iron at 350 so that was a pain um, I don't know if anybody's interested in that so let's see that's a bit, what was interesting to me too just clearing my buffer going on my stuff but at the event last weekend when I was flying that plane, and in the video, oh, it's funny, the video that Juan Sanchez took that's posted um, on my channel, um, you know, a couple of videos back from yesterday or the day before, you can see that in the beginning of the flight that all four of my servo arms on my ailerons, they're all intact. And then you can see uh, the last minute of the video, or last 30 seconds of the video, that um, that one is broke. You know, the outside one, the servo arm snapped. 
and I think I mentioned this in the last video, but yeah, the 961 wasn't going to break, so the servo arm broke. But what's interesting, and I could feel that it wasn't rolling quite the same, but it was still rolling and it was still totally flyable. And you can see in the video that the aileron's still working, you know, and it's still 3D rate, you know, 40 degrees over and all that stuff, but it definitely was flexing, you know, towards the end because all that was left was the inside servo. And that's the point I'm trying to make now is that one 961 was enough to handle a large 40% aileron <laughs> in high winds doing, you know, high uh, speed rolls, you know, so pretty impressive. Yeah, just one servo <laughs> was good enough. But yeah, now I got to replace um, those arms. Uh, that's kind of it. It's probably more than you wanted to know. That's a lot to know about this these things and I don't have displays and animations and uh, demonstrations of all the stuff I'm talking about so um, you have to figure out what I'm saying <laughs> it's like code or something and shit man I think that clears the buffer and I'm out